Open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy, because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me, the pangs of Sheol laid hold on me, I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord, O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed Even when I spoke, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, all mankind are liars. 
What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading for the third Sunday of Easter is from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Peter chapter 1. If you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as gold or silver, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, Love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. And our third reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day 
since these things happened. Moreover, some of our some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village in which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed, and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while, we talk, while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We're pleased that you are able to join us on this third Sunday of Easter. Uh, a few announcements for you. Uh, first, that we had been collecting uh, change in baby bottles to support the Oaks Family Care Center in Brunswick. Uh, continue to, uh, to set aside the pocket change and, and various things. Um, keep collecting. And uh, when we do return to in-person worship, we'll begin collecting them at, at that time. So uh, we'll just extend the uh, fundraising uh, for the Oaks Family Care Center uh, as long as you have uh, pocket change. Um, <clears throat> an update on our golf outing. Uh, the golf outing team met this last week, and we've made the a, a difficult but we believe necessary decision to cancel this year's golf outing rather than trying to postpone it and perhaps having to postpone it again. Um, so we're going to cancel this year's golf outing. Many of you have brought in or already acquired items for baskets, and uh, we're still going to move forward with those baskets later in the year to do a fundraiser for Marissa's Mission Foundation, and we'll also be providing some opportunities to support Marissa's Mission Foundation um, in, the, in the coming weeks. So do, do look forward to, to those opportunities also. Um, tomorrow... Uh, we're anticipating uh, Governor DeWine to begin laying out his uh, a, a multi-phase plan for sort of reopening e economic things and businesses uh, beyond essential workers and things like that. Um, the congregation, you know, we've been very blessed in Ohio that um, even in these stay-at-home orders, uh, churches have not had to face any sort of civil or, or any sort of criminal um, violations for holding any types of services or anything like that, leaving it to us to move forward in the best interest of our, of our members and, and uh, their safety and your safety and, and health. Um, as he outlines sort of the reopening of the economy and we begin to have some, some freer movement about for various businesses and things, um, the elders, myself, together with the uh, wellness team, will be evaluating um, our situation in light of those different um, phases, and uh, we'll keep you informed as to various phases also of um, resuming uh, services and, and things here at, at St. Paul. Um, our first and foremost interest is in your, your health and safety and providing that good opportunity to come together around the gifts of God, and uh, so do keep, um, do watch for emails and uh, bulletin announcements, things like that during these live streams and uh, to, to keep abreast of all, all that's going to be developing there. Uh, join us at uh, 9.30 today for a Bible study. Uh, you can 
um, attend just by watching on Facebook or YouTube, uh, where you are now, or if you'd like to participate live, there's a link to a Zoom meeting in the description to these, and also at our homepage, uh, SPVC, St. Paul Valley City, spvc.org, um, and you can join us live and, and work with us through the, uh, through the Bible study. We're going to be looking at the hymn writer, Paul Gerhard, and uh, some of his beautiful texts, and as he was uh, a pastor in the 1600s in Germany, and also faced uh, a, a plague in the Thirty Years' War during his time as a pastor, um, and sort of very timely, and especially when you consider the, the text of the hymns that he wrote being very hopeful and uh, focused on God's mercy and, and the resurrection, even in the midst of uh, a, a very deadly plague that he experienced in his time. Um, in our prayers, we continue to keep in our prayers um, Anna Gothel, who is recovering in uh, Copley at the Cleveland Clinic Rehab. She had had a, uh, um, uh, a stroke, but now is, is recovering there at a rehab hospital. So we keep her in our prayers. Also, um, Ralph Zacharias, this would be uh, a family of Stuart and Donna. Um, he is healing uh, from a fall after breaking his hip. And uh, last week, we were praying for um, the daughter of Judy Flom's niece. Um, her name is Charlotte. Uh, we prayed for Charlotte as she was being hospitalized, and uh, they've now determined a diagnosis of, uh, of leukemia for that young girl. And so we will keep her and uh, all her loved ones in our prayers as she works through treatments and pray that uh, the Lord would grant her healing and deliverance there. Well, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we will continue with our hymn of the day, number 476, Who Are You Who Walk in Sorrow? by 
with the Spirit's breath. At the font you claim and name us, born of water and the word. At the table still you'll feed us, host us as our risen Lord. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Last week, we heard of Christ coming to be with his disciples as they were locked behind doors, locked away because of fear. Meanwhile, two of them, were on their way to Emmaus, out on the road. Seven miles they walked, but they were out. They were out and about and talking and discussing all of those things that had happened in Jerusalem. So we move from being locked in behind doors to being out on the move from one place to another. And there is Christ, present with those who need him, who love him, and he comes bringing them peace. We have spent weeks now, like those disciples, closed in behind doors, limiting our movement and our coming and going and our contact with people for fear, for uneasiness, for the love of neighbor and to mitigate the spread of disease, fear of possible death. But now, perhaps the days are coming when we will be more like the two Emmaus disciples as we begin to venture out more and more, more freely, and there Christ will still be present with us. These two were traveling with heavy hearts. They were still reeling from the past few days' events, the death and now the life of their Savior Jesus, the news, the good news, the gospel news that Christ is risen, he is risen from the dead, he is risen indeed, alleluia. The news that he lives was still hard to believe. And so as they walked, they talked. And Christ became their companion on the way. Christ is their companion on the way, asked them questions, opened to them the scriptures, went with them to wherever they were going, stayed with them at their invitation, broke bread with them, blessed it, gave it to them, and revealed himself to them in those scriptures and in the breaking of that bread. Christ was present with them, even amidst their sadness, their weariness, their tiredness, and their confusion. Christ came as their companion on the way. You have a companion on the way. 
Christ has not left you comfortless in these difficult days, in any difficult day that you have ever faced. We've walked, walked down long roads of quarantine now. We will walk down long roads of illness and recovery, of joblessness and recovery, of uncertainty for our futures, and times of joy as well, when our hearts will burn within us for happiness and joy at the gifts that God freely gives. And through all these things, Christ is your companion on the way. As he walks with them, he prods them with questions, not because he wishes to know the answers, but he wishes to explore their faith, give them the opportunity to confess who Jesus is, what he has done, and what they have heard since in what they believe. He walks with them and asks, what are you talking about? Could you imagine someone coming up to you and saying, so what's been going on the last few weeks here in the world? I think we would respond very much like these Emmaus disciples. Are you the only person who hasn't heard all these things going on? COVID-19 and the quarantine and all these things? How out of touch could you be? He says, what things? And they confess who they believe Jesus is. A man, indeed, he is true man. And a prophet, and indeed more than a prophet, the very son of God. Mighty indeed in word before God and all the people. Indeed, he revealed himself to be the Christ, the son of the living God, through his preaching and teaching and the many miracles that he did. And indeed, the chief priests and rulers did crucify him. He had been their hope to redeem Israel. But what did they mean? To redeem Israel, was that to rescue them from Romans? Or was it had had been prophesied from the beginning? That he would redeem Israel, that he would rescue God's people by crushing the serpent's head defeating sin and death and rising victorious in life. Indeed. Indeed, Jesus says, how foolish could you be? You've heard the word of God. You've heard all the prophets had spoken. And didn't you know that this is exactly how it was going to be? Didn't you hear Jesus' own words that he would suffer these things and enter into his glory? Did you not know that it was necessary to suffer these things, to enter into his glory. It was necessary that Jesus be handed over to sinful men, crucified, and on the third day rise. As St. Peter says in his epistle, that Jesus was foreknown before the foundation of the world, was, but was made manifest in these last times for your sake, that you were redeemed not with perishable things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ like a lamb without blemish or spot. This is the necessary thing for Christ to be your companion on the way, to give you peace even in the midst of suffering and difficulty in this time of our exile, as St. Peter puts it. He's our companion on the way because he has already defeated the difficulties and the darkness the long roads that lie ahead of us. He's already at their destination, preparing a place for us. And he is with us as we go along the way, encouraging us, forgiving us, strengthening us for each new day. You have his word. You have the words of the prophets, and we go from Moses and the prophets and the Psalms to the New Testament scriptures, the Gospels and the Epistles. And our hearts burn within us by the work of the Holy Spirit as our faith is enlivened in us as we hear the scriptures open to us. That you know that Jesus is the Christ and Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And he has appeared to Simon and Cleopas and to all the disciples and 500 others and all these who bore witness that indeed he is the living one. He was with them, and he is with you as a companion on the way. 
In the scriptures and in the breaking of bread, Christ is made known to you. The days will soon come when we, we will again break bread together here in this place. We will take it, bless it, break it and give it. Take and eat and take and drink the very body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. That Christ would be made known to you in the eating and drinking and in the hearing of his word. You are forgiven, child of God. That even in your difficulties as you stand still looking sad as you had your hopes turned into something different and what you had thought would be is no longer. You are a forgiven child of God. You are new in Christ. He holds the future in his hands. and He is your companion on the way. Stay with us, Lord, for the day is far spent, for these days are long and drawn out. Stay with us. Reveal yourself to us. Make yourself known in the scriptures and in the breaking of bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Stay with us till night has come. Our praise to you this day be sung. Bless our bread, open our eyes. Jesus, be our great surprise. Walk with us, our spirits sigh, hear when our weary spirits cry, feel again our loss, our pain, Jesus, take us to your side. Walk with us, the road will bend, make all our weeping, wailing end. Wipe our tears, forgive our fears, Jesus, lift the heavy cross. Talk with us. Till we behold a joyful life you will unfold. Heal our eyes to see the prize. Jesus, take us to the light. Stay with us till day. nor dark shall dim the sun. Cheer the heart, your grace impart. Jesus, bring eternal life. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you, for you answer me. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. You have heard our pleas for mercy, O Lord, and given up your Son to be our Savior. Hear us now as we come to you on behalf of ourselves and all people into their needs. Our hearts have burned in us, O Lord, as your word has been read and preached. Keep our faith from growing cold and grant us grace that we may not waver in faith or succumb to temptation. Give to us and to our children receptive hearts, that we may hear, and hearing, believe, and believing, be steadfast in this faith and hope all our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have cleansed us, O Lord, with the water and the word in baptism, and you have marked us as your own people. Give to us grace that we may live out this faith in holy lives, lifting up your name and word and works for as long as we live. Guide us that we may purify our souls by living in obedience to your word and in brotherly love for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless your church, O Lord, that she may welcome the stranger in Christ's name and manifest the unity of the faith and the bonds of love. Bless Matthew Harrison, presiding in our synod, Kevin Wilson, our district president, Dale Hulesman, our circuit visitor, Philip Zielinski, our pastor. Bless those training for church work vocations. Bless each of us as we live out our baptismal vocation of worship, witness, prayer, and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guard our nation, O Lord, that we may enjoy peace and security in the face of threat and danger. Bless Donald Trump, our president, the Congress of the United States, Mike DeWine, our governor, and all state and local officials, that they may fulfill their offices faithfully. Bless the members of the armed forces who protect us and teach the nations the ways of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Deliver us from all our afflictions and grant us strength to bear all our burdens. O Lord, hear us in particular for those who are afflicted by the COVID-19 virus. Also for Chelsea and Ralph, Charlotte, Heather, Diana, Kenneth and Denise, 
Anna, Judy, Karen, Joyce, Norma, Billy, Bev, Angie, Linda, Susan, Kelsey, Teresa, Mark, Frank, Andrea, Jean, Sue, Colin, and those whom we name in our hearts. According to your gracious will, heal the sick, relieve those who suffer, comfort the grieving, and give peace to the dying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Stay with us, O Lord, and be our strength in weakness and our hope in time of despair. Your gracious will once kept the saints in faith even unto death. Keep us, we pray, with them in your faith and fear, that we may be found faithful when Christ comes again in his glory to bring to fulfillment all things once and forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through the breaking of the bread, O Lord, feed us upon the flesh of Christ and grant us to drink his blood in faith. Forgive our sins, strengthen our faith, build up our unity as a congregation and synod, and equip us through this communion to love you and love one another as you have loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And with our songs of praise, accept our tithes and offerings that your church may have the resources to proclaim your gospel and care for the poor and those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and whatever other things we need, O Lord, we pray you to grant us in the name of and for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose death has made full atonement for our sin and whose resurrection has granted to us the promise of our own joyful resurrection to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Oh.
Christians on 